Welcome to another Law video, uh, the last one before the big update on Tuesday. The big content providers and streamers got a sneak peek at some of the upcoming content, and if you haven't seen it yet, and you don't mind a few spoilers, I've linked to Commander Burr's video, which gives you his usual excellent summary of some of the new stuff on the way. Watch at your discretion. There are some interesting times ahead, which I'll probably discuss in a future video after the update drops, and I've had time to process it all. For now, I'll just say that there should be a good mix of combative and non-combative activities to do, so that's a positive for those who really, really don't want to fight at all. Um, as Burr says in his videos, it's good to see that there are going to be things for players to do that don't require them to gain a certain level of AX proficiency first. If you've been watching my video series, you'll know that I've been a big advocate of non-combative activities to do as well. So hopefully um, what we can see in these spoilers is that FDev are at least partially considering that point of view and providing a new range of things for players to do after the update drops on Tuesday. For the moment, as we wait for the update, I'm going to take a look at some of the stories that are on hold for the moment, but likely to be continued after the update. D2 showed Jhene after going walkabout and getting hunted by unknown mercenaries, was returned safely to Aegis by the Far God cult of all people, and as that's in Federation space where the cult is banned, the feds had to reluctantly give them a week's grace to restock and move on. Tanner and the others are sceptical of her claim that Salvation has uploaded himself into some kind of storage using Guardian technology, but Aegis has now compared the information D2 brought back with Pranavantel's sim base in Utopia and found that the sim base only reads electrochemical signals from the brain and stores them as digital memories. It doesn't transfer consciousness or convert the consciousness in some way so that it can exist outside the physical body after death. So it's nothing like whatever salvation may or may not be using. We'll come back to D2 in a few minutes. Only two days after posting my last video where I said the next stage for Aegis would be working on some way of neutralising the energy waves that the Maelstroms are using to stop ships reaching their centres, an article came out in Galnet saying that this was now being worked on. And now we have a community goal that started on Tuesday, exactly a week before the next update and set to end just before it. It's a regular two-handed combat and trade community goal, bringing supplies or collecting bounties, and it will allow Aegis to mass-produce the new device the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer. Not the most imaginative name, but it does what it says on the tin. The new Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer is, logically enough, a variation of the shutdown field neutralizer we already have, and now we know where the Grelics fit in. This article tells anyone who didn't know already that Grelics are created by taking Guardian relics to a Thargoid site and plugging them into the Star Map machine. That changes the relics from blue to green, and from then on, they emit radiation on both Thargoid and Guardian frequencies. The Thargoid frequencies are similar to the frequencies of the Maelstrom's energy wave, so the research by Palin and Ramtar into the Grelix has led to this new device. The top 10 in each community goal will get one of the new neutralizers for free, and for everybody else, it will be unlockable at the rescue ships. Grelix will be used to unlock them, you will need at least one. Hopefully, like the Caustic Sink, you'll just be able to unlock it once, and then you can get as many as you like. Remember back when people first got the Grelics, and Ramtar and Palin both sent messages asking for them to study? Well, Commander Zarian and Grim Scrub from AXI, Grim we know very well because uh, he's always dropped in whenever there's been a station attack and had a quick chat with us every Thursday morning. Um, they both got this message saying that as they were one of the people to deliver the first few Grelics, or the most Grelics, to Ramtar or Palin, that they were giving them and the rest of the top 50 contributors a free neutralizer as a thank you present. So you can now look back on that as a secret community goal, if you like, that has now been rewarded. This is a really nice tie-in to that activity, 
and a way to reward those early contributors to the research that was later adopted by Aegis. A lovely little gesture and an excellent story tie in there. Some people are disappointed that there isn't more to the Grelics than this, and if that's all there is to them, then so am I. But as a storyline, it's solid enough, and we don't know yet that this is all there is to the Grelics, so jumping to conclusions may be premature. It does make me wonder, though, if the whole Thargoid EMP technology, whether it throws you away from something they don't want you to approach, as with the Maelstroms, whether it shuts down your ship, as with Interceptor encounters, or whether it trashes your Guardian modules as the Orthrus EMP does, the fact that Thargoid modified Guardian relics have been the key to neutralising Maelstrom pulses, and my own feeling that the Guardians still have a part to play in all of this, makes me wonder if their entire EMP technology was originally developed as an anti-Guardian weapon, and that's why studying Guardian technology has been the key to combating it. With this, and the possibility of Salvation storing his ego in a Guardian box, the Guardians are either obliquely or directly becoming a larger part of the picture as more time passes. This line in the article about setting up a manufacturing and distribution base has piqued some players' interest, and they're wondering if we may finally see all of the double-engineered modules from previous community goals being released. It would be nice, because this is long overdue, so hopefully that is the hint people have taken it to be, and it's a good way to do it. It fits in with an organisation like Aegis to realise that while we wait for new technology to be developed, we should at least get the best versions of technology we already possess. It's not all good news though. This article here from Shojine, the Thargoids know we're coming. A warning about entering the maelstroms has been offered by Shojine, whose unique cortical implant offers glimpses into the Thargoid hive mind. Aidan Tanner released a statement, Shojine approached me in a state of distress, shortly after the first tests of the Thargoid pulse neutraliser. She claimed as the probes passed through Tyrannus' energy wave, she perceived a change among the Thargoid voices, like being woken up by insect bites was how she described it. The Thargoids aren't as oblivious to our tests as it sometimes seems, she told me. I pressed her for more details, but there was only one thing she was convinced about. They understand we've found a way to push deeper into the maelstrom. They know we're coming. Now this might mean nothing at all, and it's not verifiable data, but it prompted Professor Tezro to pass on her concerns to the superpowers. Likewise, I feel a sense of duty to share this with the galactic community. Any pilots who plan to explore the maelstrom cause should not assume that they will have the element of surprise. Vice Admiral Skylar Anderson of the Empire and their military liaison to Aegis commented, I've personally reviewed all recent tactical reports, but found no evidence of any changes in a Thargoid's behaviour or strategy. Well, no, of course you haven't. We are proceeding with our plans to mass-produce the Thargoid pulse neutraliser and send cruise ships into the maelstroms. Tanner's concern is noted, however, and we urge extreme caution in these early expeditions. Well, yeah, you're not going to notice any great big change in their tactics yet, so it's a bit silly of the military to say they haven't noticed any. Of course they haven't. That's not how Thargoids operate. They wait for us to do something, then counter it. You don't need to be a military genius to see that's been the pattern all along. Their pattern has been to see what we do first, and then react with the next bit of weirdness that we have to figure out. Now I'm obviously just theorising here because I've got no idea what FDev have decided about Thargoids, but their adaptability seems to be fast and spontaneous to anything major that we do. It's as if they know that you can't see every threat coming, so they found a way to build a kind of adaptability to major threats into their biology, as if it doesn't necessarily have to know exactly what the threat is, at least not immediately or in vast amounts of detail, but only how to adapt fast and survive it. And that ability to adapt suddenly and rapidly just kicks in and does whatever it needs to. If that's how it works, then I'm guessing that at the end of the first Thargoid War, the ones who survived the mycoid virus developed immunity pretty fast. Or perhaps after being hit with mycoid, they developed the ability to quickly out-evolve or otherwise adapt to major threats. 
In biological evolution, when it suddenly speeds up like that, it's called punctuated equilibrium, where an organism evolves for the most part at a slow and steady rate, but there are sudden jumps where a major change happens, particularly when it branches off into different species. But that's natural evolution and adaptation, whereas the evolution of the Thargoids could be, in part at least, genetically engineered or otherwise accelerated. That said, the fact that the probes didn't come back is a good indication that they know at least what we're trying to do. So the idea that they might be prepared for it shouldn't really need spelling out to soldiers and scientists. Since the new ship we saw was in a maelstrom system, it may be that these will be what will attack in force when anyone gets too close to the centre. What else may be waiting for us in there we'll have to see. I personally don't think we'll get all the way to the centre yet, just to the next layer, the next level of defence as it were. But who knows, we might do. And even if we don't, it may serve to cut the maelstrom's ability to control all the systems around it, making them easier to clear, perhaps weakening them in some way. All sorts of possibilities could happen from here. Things are building up to the federal election now that Hudson won't be allowed to stand again. And for all his claims to individuality and a colourful past, new boy Zachary Rackham is already looking to become another safe, corporate-led clone leader, as we can see from this attempt to court funding. But we'll see what he does if he wins. Otherwise, I think Winters winning would lead to more interesting storytelling, personally. Go Felicia. The assassin of the CEO of Kane Massey has now been cleared of any connection to the Empire, including the Minotaur Val. The sinister spiderhead woman is not guilty. The motive and who hired the assassin is unknown, but it sparked a fight between Empire and Federation aligned factions, which became a community goal. So that's at least one consequence we can identify. That community goal has now ended and both superpowers have also stepped in to stop the squabble after an Imperial ship shot an innocent supply ship carrying AX weapons thinking it was a Federation vessel. And the superpowers said enough is enough. This is an important supply system you're fighting in. It's providing vital support to those fighting in the systems around the Maelstrom Legong, so knock it off. As far as this goes, it seems like an interesting interlude, but how it fits into the wider story, I've no idea, or, or even if it really does, you know, perhaps it was just a natural part of the story that they wanted to express, because it was going to come up at some point anyway, you know, now it's not the time for infighting, we must join forces against the common enemy, fight for the common cause, and so on, and they made a little CG out of it to give players some cash and involvement. Otherwise, it seems to have started and ended and left us with a, okay, now what, feeling. As if it was just a bit of a gap filler while waiting for the update. If it ends up having more significance than that, we will see. But for now, the factions have stopped fighting and disrupting everybody else. So that, for the moment, is that. On to the war. And as I said before, we're now at the stage where we can prevent all but a few invasions each week with the only ones getting through being any populated alerts that didn't get done the previous week. For the last four weeks, we have had 40, 40, 39 and 39 new alerts to deal with. The last two 39s, we believe, may be due to some of the controlled systems around the Maelstrom Haddad being cleared out and therefore reducing that Maelstrom's capacity to produce alerts. That's the working theory. And meanwhile, we still, we've only really moved on from playing whack-a-mole with invasions to whack-a-mole with alerts. And as I said before, that won't change until more of the controlled systems nearby are cleared away. Sorry for sounding like a stuck record on that, but that's because it hasn't stopped being true yet. With groups like ours and many others working together and largely able to keep alerts and invasions under some semblance of control, there hasn't really been a concerted effort in controlled systems by a large section of the AX community. That is now changing. As small groups have been releasing their findings after experimenting with tissue sampling in those systems, and hopefully now, if they haven't burned out too much, the AX pilots can get seriously organised to start clearing a space around inhabited systems, push back the expansion, 
reduce the alerts and the number of systems controlled by each maelstrom. Whatever new maelstrom combating technology we get after the update, this job will still need doing, unless we can find a way of taking out several controlled systems at once. I have wondered if the frontline systems they put in were meant to be taken out first, and if that would then weaken the controlled systems around them, but either this isn't the case or the effect it has is minimal because it seems likely that if the frontline systems mean anything then they represent the direction of expansion so stopping them may stop that but so will taking back more controlled systems and any controlled system near an inhabited system has a chance to cause an alert there and as they all need doing that's either something players can do enough of or not one thing that the new update will be showing is the so-called frontline systems, the controlled systems with um, conflict zones in them will now show as little purple icons in the galaxy map as of Tuesday. Tissue sampling has become the new meta for clearing controlled systems, which in two ways at least isn't such a bad thing. Firstly, it's an alternative to just killing. And secondly, it's something a wing can do, so you don't need large groups. But of course large groups able to send out many wings at once to sample with can only help if they're not too burned out by killing Thargoids to go out and sample from them instead. I've been saying all along that I want something different from this war, not just a repeat of old wartime tropes recreated in space. And although this isn't what I was thinking of specifically, it's certainly different. After mobilising to do rescues, deliveries and AX to get us to the point we're at today, thanks to tissue sampling being so effective everywhere, the war is now slowly being won by wings of militant dermatologists. Who saw that coming? So that's it for the moment. Hopefully the update will go in without a hitch and after a few days of getting my head round whatever it brings and after the dust has settled a bit after any explosions from the player base, I'll do another video. Hopefully it will deliver on new content and activities to keep everyone involved, regardless of what roles they play as well. Fingers crossed, and thanks for watching.